Hello, this is Michael J. Emery. I'd like to share briefly a little bit about submodalities. Submodalities are, um, they're a discovery by Dr. Richard Bandler during the uh, 60s and 70s, I believe. I'm not sure quite what the date was when he figured this out, but Dr. Bandler noticed that um, when he was putting together what became Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP, Dr. Bandler noticed that people store their memories in different um, locations. It's kind of a, it's an interesting concept. I don't know why people weren't paying attention to this earlier, but um, you know, all credit goes to Dr. Bandler and uh, of course Dr. Grender as they both work together to discover uh, these submodalities. Um, but anyways, submodalities are the way that we store information in our mind. And it's kind of a, it's a definitely an interesting concept. So think about this. Here I am, I'm kind of, I'm out in Oregon, um, you know, things are green here. I'm here by a river. You can probably hear uh, noises in the background. Perhaps it's a crow or a, a, a raven or a blue jay. I don't really know my wildlife that well. You can probably hear the river in the background. Of course, you can hear my voice. You can see me. Now, if you close your eyes and try to repicture what you're seeing right now on your screen, you're probably going to come up with, you know, a, a forest background, a river, maybe some of the noises, uh, me speaking, and these, you know, all the components or all of the different bits of information that you're pulling in right now to your conscious awareness. Now, here's what's unique. In your mind's eye, if you were to close your eyes and listen to my voice right now, in your mind's eye, could you turn the image that you're seeing, could you turn it black and white? Could you make it black and white? And what if you could make it, say, 40 feet tall so that you could see me in your mind's eye and I was 40 feet tall? Now, make me three inches tall. What we're doing is we're playing around with the submodalities and it takes a little bit of practice. And, you know, usually when I'm working with somebody under a coaching setting, they say, well, you know, Mike, I just can't visualize that well, so, you know, help me out here. Not a problem. I think visualization, sometimes it comes natural for certain people. Um, I think it's something that you can definitely create an ability to do it and you can refine it. And I, I like to use the old adage, adage that what you can see in your mind's eye, you can make into reality. And, um, you know, I don't know how time tested that is, but it's something that I like to hold on to because the more clearly I can perceive something in my mind's eye, or the more clearly that I can have an experience, it's an internal uh, cognitive process that gives me a lot of um, clarity and a lot of flexibility for creating that experience in the real life or in you know reality as it surrounds me. So back to some modalities. Think about this. Um, if you're watching this now, you're probably not in third grade. I'm hoping you're a little bit older than that. And if you are in third grade, props to you. That's great. I'm glad that you're getting this kind of information. So think back to when you were in third grade. And if you had to point 360 degrees around, where would you point to that memory? It's a funny idea, I know. But we do it all the time when we talk. So if it's not coming up for you right now and you can't go, well, third grade seems like it was back there. Think about this. Have you ever been talking to somebody and they gesture and they go, you know, well, uh, you know, yesterday I was talking to somebody and, you know, he was still mad about, you know, something that happened way back in the past. And, you know, I just can't believe it. Why is he holding on to that old stuff? I mean, can't we both just like move forward and get what we want in life? We do this all the time in our language. It's, it's really amazing and I love to listen to it when, uh, when I work with clients, especially over the phone since I don't have the visual component usually. I've got to listen for keys in their language that give away the submodalities or the ways that they're storing information in their mind's eye. So here's another one. Think about what you want to accomplish. Um, better yet, not what you want to accomplish. Where do you think you'll be? on um, New Year's Day, the upcoming New Year's Day. It may be a few months from now, maybe it's a year from now, where, whenever that is. Now, if you had to point to where it seems like you're storing that concept of New Year's Day in the future, the next New Year's Day, where would you point? I can tell you for me, I'd point, it's up there. It's kind of, you know, 
right over there. And that's where I'm gonna be going when I think about New Year's Day. And if you ask me where today was, and these are kind of timeline concepts. If you ask me where today was, I would point, it's right here, it's right here in front of me. 